I would summarize it as the, the anti-rock memoir. <laughs> When I was approached to do a memoir, I thought of um, different ways people dealt with it. The ones I liked the most are like um, writers like Mary Carr, where you're reading it and you have to keep reminding yourself that it's, it's um, not fiction. Well, the book begins um, with the last Sonic Youth show and the last tour in South America. And, um, I don't know, it just seemed like a good way to draw people in. <laughs> I mean, in a way, it's also like, let's get that over with. <laughs> so, because people are probably going to be expecting it or something. I, you know, I definitely didn't want to make it a, the, a, the Sonic Youth story. It had to be a story about me and, and how I evolved. And, you know, I wanted it to be somewhat a portrait of Los Angeles in the 60s and 70s, and New York in the 80s and 90s, and and um, try to, you know, reimagine myself back in th those times, and um, just almost physically feel what it was like, and then to let the kind of emotions come into that, and then I was very aware of people I know reading it, or even like Lee and Steve reading it, or people, other musicians, and thinking, oh, they're gonna, <laughs> they're not gonna like this, or it, I, I, I tried actually not to write about um, certain people that much, because even if you're being positive, I think people have a hard time just actually being described. Uh, and I know that writers, um, you know, real writers, you know, there, there's a sense of, um, you, you know, you just really can't think about that. And, but I, I you know, I had a hard time. Um, I mean, I wanted to be as accurate as possible, but at the same time, if you're getting an idea across, it's important to get the idea across. And to some extent, details are really important, but I always felt like it's the idea is more important than getting it exactly accurate. And I think that's where in memoirs that comes into play a bit. I mean, I think, you know, writing is always helpful in that it gives you distance from something um, and that you can really let go of things. And um, so the more emotional things like the breakup, I think, you know, as you're writing about your whole life, you really get a sense of Life's short. Our <laughs> time goes by quickly, um, and um, you know. And I don't know. I just had a strong feeling that this is um, really all I can control right here is on on this page while I'm writing it. And I've always felt that way in terms of writing or starting an idea for art or something. I always feel like I don't need anything else to create anything. It's just right here, and I, it's just me and the page. And, and um, I don't know, and, and there's a certain amount of uh, relief in that, or just kind of, um, em, you know, empowerment that you can do that, express something in such a simple way. I felt like, um, well, people already know what happened somewhat and you know I didn't I tried not to um, really go in to the dynamics of the marriage so much um, and I really just tried to tell the story as plainly and as simply as I could and um, you know without sensationalizing it and just um, I mean it's just really part of my whole story, so I, I couldn't really leave it out. It would have been, um, like, I, I didn't write the book to up my brand. Um, so, you know, I, I, I kind of always wanted to write a book, and I um, 
wanted it to be, to have all the dynamics that a story has. Um, and um, to finally kind of sort of, you know, verbalize it enough to put an end to it, to be able to kind of move on to do other things and think about other things. I don't know, when you, when you um, sit down to write a book and you obviously can't write about everybody and you, you sort of have to pick and choose and write about people who someone might know, you know, because you're not writing a novel and fleshing out characters. And um, there's certainly a lot of other people I could have written, but these were people were more like signposts and um, really did have a big influence on me. Um, like even someone like Kurt, I mean, I don't know how much of an influence he had, but he certainly touched me and I think about him still, like quite frequently. I always wanted to be an artist and uh, this very old dear friend of my parents who I talk about in the book, um, Maxie Benson, who knew me since I was five, said, you know, you're really kind of the same as you always were. And I think um, I tried to write the book from that sort of point in yourself where you feel like that's authentically you, um, regardless of what else has gone on you in your life. And um, so I kind of just tried to follow that. The book is an, kind of an arc of, you know, my evolution of um, becoming more myself, really, like as even a little girl wanting to be an artist, but then taking a really long time to <laughs> put everything together to get where I am right now. That um, it's really all that making it possible for me to do um, maybe even my best work right now.